but I do think the sensor placement is pretty great here. Now moving on, one thing I haven't seen many people mention here is the 6P does actually come with a notification light. Now it isn't hidden away in some root menu that you can't get to, it's actually in sound and notification and you can see it right there, pulse notification light. It's an on and off toggle, by default it does come with, uh, does come off so make sure you turn it Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick initial impressions video here, I've had the device for around 24 hours so these feelings could change come my full review in about a week or so's time. But yeah, I've got to say, I'm really enjoying the 6P. The feel in the hand alone is exceptional. That all-metal build just makes such a big difference compared to previous Nexus devices. And looking at this on video really doesn't do it justice. It feels solid, no creaks or rattles. The display is mentioned in its Q&A Reddit thread that they did a lot of work on color accuracy, things like white point and all that sort of stuff. Out of the box, of course, with AMOLED, things do come very punchy. It's a cooler display than the Nexus 6, which I think had a warmer display. I actually prefer a cooler display, though, so I'm quite happy with this. If you don't like the punchy colors, you can actually dive into the on if you'd like to. And we can test this out right now. So it's actually located just to the left of the front-facing camera. So if I send myself a notification, you can see there it is. It's blinking yellow. So you could choose to use this over ambient display, which you can see is also firing off on my screen. It's completely up to you. But it's nice to see Google actually include the options in the settings. It's nice to have the option, especially if your device actually has an LED indicator. So AMOLED, so you can expect punchy colors and impossibly deep blacks. The brightness seems good to me so far. It's brighter than my Nexus 6 for sure, but not as bright as something like the Galaxy S6 or the Note 5. And in direct sunlight, you probably will have to crank this to full brightness, so just take that into account. Now when we first got a glimpse from the leaked photos of the 6P, everyone kind of went crazy developer options and you'll see an sRGB mode. Uh, which is kind of interesting they put it here, I'm not sure why they just didn't put it in the display option but if you enable this basically it'll take a few seconds for it to actually kick in but if you go back to the home screen you're going to notice a significant difference in the color reproduction it's definitely a lot more muted than the uh, punchy AMOLED colors but this is me so yeah I'm glad they included that and just like its predecessor, it does have front-facing stereo speakers, and these are seriously loud and clear. I think they're actually louder than the Nexus 6 speakers, so I, you know, I've had to turn them down at times because they are just that loud, which is awesome to see. I love front-facing speakers now. It really is hard to go back to a device without them. I think they're awesome. It's just a much better experience than a backwards facing or a downwards facing speaker so again I'm glad they included that. About that camera hump on the back but I can tell you when you have the device in hand it's a complete non-issue it's much smaller than it seemed on the leaked photos it still lays flat on a table it doesn't feel top heavy either so if you were worried about the hump before I can tell you that you really just don't have to be. A nice touch from Huawei here is the hatched textured power button it's noticeably different from the volume rocker smooth texture so you know which button. Google made a pretty big fuss about the camera here. To be honest, I haven't actually used it too much, but I can show you the shortcut. So you can actually double tap the power button. The device will give you a pretty long vibration to tell you that you've got the gesture correct and it will launch the camera app very quickly. One thing to note here is even if your device is unlocked, if you do use that gesture, you will have to unlock your device again once you exit the camera. So you can Samsung uh, photo modes you get on the uh, Samsung Galaxy series. Um, I'm not too fast about color reproduction to that much of an extent that I'd probably change it to this. I think I'd just leave it on the defaults, which I am actually pretty happy about. But if you're a color enthusiast and you like to view your photos and it's under your finger, and it definitely helps distinguish a difference between the two, which is important seeing as they're both on the same side and are quite close together. The fingerprint sensor so far has been exceptional for me. All you have to do is slightly tap the sensor and boom, you're into your home screen. It's seriously fast and accurate. It gives you great transparent security, so much so that you actually forget you have security. See, I was unlocked. I'm into the camera now. If I press the home button, you can see the device is locked again. So you either have to enter your pin or use your fingerprint. And you can use this gesture from anywhere. You can do it when the screen's off straight into the camera. Like I said, you can see for yourself, it is very fast to launch the camera, which is just fantastic. It's much better than the uh, lock screen shortcut that we had previously, which is still there, by the way, if you did like that. Now, in terms of color reproduction, Google sRGB, you can enable that and it, at least there's an option for you. 
Guys, I'm not going to talk about battery life just yet. I've only had the device 24 hours and really I've just been setting it up, downloading loads of apps, so it really wouldn't be fair for me to say. But that, of course, will be coming in my full review, so stay tuned for that. But there you go, guys. That's my initial impressions of the Huawei Nexus 6P. I'm really enjoying this device. I think it's absolutely awesome. So, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Security enabled on your device. And yes, you can also use the fingerprint to authorize purchases on the Google Play Store. Now, in terms of its placement, I think the placement is good. For a device this size, if we had it on the bottom where the speaker is, you'd have to have a really strange grip. Whereas on the back, you can grip your phone normally and just move your index finger to the sensor and you can unlock your device without having a strange, awkward grip. So 